Greetings, this is Time Rider. Hey, welcome to the Back to the 50s build. The 50s. The birth of the hot rod, really. It was an era of economic prosperity where bigger, faster, and more stylish governed Detroit. Form, which had to this point followed function, caught up. And it may even pass it a little bit as style became as important to the consumer as performance. Chevrolet wanted a new body style for 1957 and many features were added inside and out. It was an incredibly popular release not only for family and business but for competitive motorsports as well. It came in three series the Bel Air, the 210 and the 150 each having options within the series. I selected this Hot Wheels version because I hate oversized, unrealistic representations of a blown something or another engine, and I wanted to unscrew this screwed up toy. Hopefully, turn it into something worth having. For those that might not know, Malto Meal is a breakfast food made here in Minnesota. However, why the car is blue and yellow is beyond me. It won't be for long, so stick around. The toy had a cast body and a plastic base that was held shut by two mushroomed over posts, one in the front and one in the back. Using a 5 16 inch drill bit here, uh, trying to be fairly careful not to, not to get too far into the plastic. And then the big hyperbolic engine with the velocity stacks and such was held on by a mushroomed over post on the bottom of the engine. Uh, I just needed to drill that part out. And then boom, no more engine, just a big hole. I'm going to have to put it back together at some point in time. I want that to happen uh, smoothly and easily. So uh, as per normal, I'm filing the burr off of the post that was left by the drill. And using a 1 inch Milwaukee brand drill bit. Drill out the center of these posts. I don't know why they painted this thing blue and yellow. It's it's really weird. Um, I don't even think that's their colors. And I realize it's almost kind of a dark turquoise. Uh, Malto Meal, their headquarters is in a little town about 50 miles south of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area called Northfield. Little drop of oil. And we top the holes out. The breakfast food is, it's kind of like cream of wheat if you've ever had that. And flip the car over. Gotta get that button screw in there. Now I'm going to flip the car over and do the same thing to the other end. Yeah, 
and a button screw for the front. And now this is my uh, my old jar of stripper, the gross and disgusting one, and in it goes. Once the paint had been removed, it was uh, time to get all the the scuzz off of it, for lack of a better term. It gets a usually a thin film of some remnant chemical chemical I'm guessing from the stripper. I also there were the 57 has a, a contoured hood and when they put this jumbo motor in they cut the contour in half so I either had to try to reconstruct the other half of the contour as well as fill the hole or take the contour off and for what I was doing what I was planning on doing with this car taking the contour off uh, was not a big deal so I just ground it off and then uh, when I'm doing customs, a lot of times I'll make sure that I get all the casting lines off the car, uh, just using files. I want a nice, clean, smooth paint surface. And I'm gonna have to fill that hole, so I want that surface to be as level as possible. So I spent a, a lot of time working on it. The casting wasn't particularly detailed, unlike, you know, Matchbox, which is usually very detailed. Um, there wasn't a lot of detail to this, no door lines. It was just a, a, a hard top version of the 57. Not that it wasn't a nice casting, it just wasn't very detailed. So I shoved a little bit of clay into the hole because I don't want the epoxy to leak out before it cures. And epoxy resin is what I'm going to use to fill this. I don't know, I always get more on, of one than the other. Which seems to work out that way. So anyway, I'll take a little bit of that away. And we're going to mix it up. And we're going to fill that hole. So then I'm going to let this epoxy sit for probably a couple of days here. And, uh, I mean, I did, I had all month to make this and I did, I, I started making it early in the month. I knew that this was going to be a challenge. You know, it's almost easier to cut the hole to put something in it than it is to fill the hole that's been cut. But I use sandpaper, I use my uh, rotary tool with sandpapers, um, and this was a process. More than once I had to do this. I wanted that hood to be as flat as I could make it. And then I, this is glazing compound, which is an automotive product that you use uh, to make sure there are uh, no scratches in your body filler. Uh, you can also use it as a filler for small scratches. It dries fairly quickly, but I usually let it cure for a day to get it because I want it to be good and hard. And I may have to do this uh, a couple of times as well. I don't know how many times I did it. I didn't record it every time, but it was a process. And then uh, as I do with a lot of things, I put primer on it to see what my result is. And if you look closely, you can see the hood on this is not quite ready.
It is getting there though. Now for the, uh, I needed this to be a, uh, a sedan, not a hard top. So I took uh, some tape and half of two very small cotter pins and used super glue and uh, baking soda like everybody else on the planet to glue these door posts in. Uh, and then it was a matter of making them square. And this was, it was a process. I looked on the internet uh, to see where the two door post went on the car. And uh, I don't think that this casting is dimensionally correct, but I think I got it in a pretty good place. So uh, this again was also a process of me uh, filing and priming and filing and priming. To me, this is a process, I think I'm, I'm trying to, you know, be as good as I can be at this. And I'll be honest, I don't know how a guy could do this in a day. I mean, I know there's guys that do uh, castings in a day. I don't, I don't know how that's done. I guess it's just not the way I do it. And I'll warn you here, I'm going to stop this at some point. Because how this model turned out, it turned out it is, it's one of my favorites. And I don't want to give it away. So I'm going to stop at some point here. And just show you how, what it turned out to be. Even now, I'm still trying to make sure that this is just smooth. Getting rid of little hairy critters. It's a beautiful little car. I'll tell you, I did paint the interior too. It's black. And uh, there'll be an episode of the bench on the tail end of this. And I'll throw all the video of me painting it onto the back side of the bench if you're interested. I won't, I'm not going to edit it. I'll just throw it on there. It's not really that interesting. It's just me painting the car. But at any rate, Here's my contribution to the 50s build. The 1957 Chevrolet NASCAR version. The guard did fairly well in NASCAR. The convertible won 26 races. My favorite NASCAR driver, as you can tell, was Dale Earnhardt. So this is kind of an homage. Clearly there was no good wrench back then. But shell oil's been around a long time. I think it turned out really nice. Stick around for an episode of the bench. This is Time Rider, and I'll leave the light on for you. Hey, thanks for sticking around for this edition of the bench. Uh, just a reminder this is a cooperative build. I got uh, Fat Guy Productions with the T Bird and Hodges Hot Wheels with the 55 and Matchbox Garage did a 1959. Nix did a 7B. I can't even remember. Ford something or another. And then uh, we got the 53 Chevy. Yeah, I'm an American. I admit it. And we've got my 57 Chevy that uh, you just watched. So be sure to look below. I'll have links 
uh, to the other sites. Uh, going next on, uh, next thing going on, I picked up uh, that uh, 75A again, the T-Bird, and we're putting another coat of primer on it. I'm going to take another pass at that two-tone paint. Somebody said I should just uh, paint it that kind of salmon and be done with it. I, I don't know. I want to get it right. So anyway, uh, that's uh, going on right now. And I'm uh, working on the three blind mice build, the race car. Uh, I've still got a ways to go. We haven't even really picked a release date yet. I think we're probably looking at somewhere in the middle of the month. Uh, and that'll work out about right for me. I've still got a long way to go on this thing, but uh, it is shaping up. 